Hey guys, it's Donovan Cole and welcome back to my channel. This tutorial is actually going to be in two parts. In this first part, I'm going to be talking about a pretty easy way that you can clean up the skin using the healing brush and also some techniques that you can use to clean up some of these stray hairs that you see using the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool. And in the second part, I will be going over my dodging and burning technique, which is the main technique that I use when retouching my photos. Before I officially begin, if you haven't done it already, come up here to Photoshop and go to your preferences and click on tools and make sure that this use legacy healing algorithm for the healing brush box is checked. This is Photoshop's older version of the healing brush and it does tend to work a lot better when it comes to retouching skin. So the first steps that I take when um, I begin retouching is I'm going to create two blank layers on top of my background layer. And this is a non-destructive way of working since I'm not touching my actual file. So you can create blank layers by hitting this icon down here at the bottom of your layers panel that kind of looks like a piece of paper. So I will click that button twice. And the reason I make two blank layers is because I tend to like to keep myself a little bit more organized. I um, have one for working on her skin and then the second one will be for working on her hair. So that way I can um, come back and forth if I need to. And uh, it really helps if you're going back through your workflow and kind of seeing um, your entire process. So to help myself stay organized a little bit better, I will name these layers accordingly. And I will name this one here. And I'm going to create a group of these two layers. And you can do that by highlighting one of them and holding down shift and clicking on the other layer or layers that you want to group and hit command or control G to group them. And I'm going to name this group clean. I'm going to open it back up and I'm going to begin by working on her skin. So I have my healing brush selected. I'm going to double check my settings to make sure everything is good. I want my hardness set to zero as with all of my brushes. My mode is normal. My source is sampled. I have my aligned checked and I'm sampling from current and below. So that way I am sampling from my actual image. If I had it set to current layer, it wouldn't have anything to sample from because this is a blank transparent layer. If I had it set to all layers, it would literally sample from every single layer that I had above or below. And I don't want that. So I'm going to make sure that I am on current and below and my pin pressure is turned off. So I'm going to zoom in. Normally I would um, retouch from uh, about this far zoomed in, but for visual purposes, in case you are watching this on a phone, I'm going to zoom in to just about 100%, but I'm not going to go any further than this because if you zoom in too far, you're going to start doing things that you shouldn't really be doing, and that will really help save you time. So I do use a Wacom tablet. Um, if you do not have a Wacom tablet, I highly recommend getting one. It will change your life, and it makes things a little bit more accurate. You can control it a little bit better versus using um, a mouse. So I'm going to make sure that my healing brush is about the size or a little bit smaller than the area that I am going to be working on. And pretty much the way the healing brush is going to work, it's going to work kind of similar to the clone stamp tool, except it's not literally going to copy and paste. The older version of the healing brush is going to take a pretty accurate guess as to what you want another area to look like. And so you can sample from another area. So basically you are telling Photoshop this area needs to look like this area. So I'm going to be removing this blemish that you see right here. So I'm going to hold down option to sample from an area nearby, preferably with similar luminosity and texture. And I'm just going to do a few brush strokes over the area that I want to take care of. 
and that took care of it pretty seamlessly. I'm going to go all around and take care of anything that is noticeable to me. And I'm going to be changing my brush size accordingly to the areas that I want to take care of. So hold down Option and Sample. I'm going to come down to her chin, take care of this. And you can use the healing brush for several different things. You can use it, um, obviously, for removing blemishes. And you can even use it for taking care of small spots of discoloration, like this area right here. The healing brush can easily take care of that. Just sample from an area with similar color, luminosity, and texture. And just a few brush strokes will do the trick. And this is a pretty good way of retaining the skin texture, which is very vital when it comes to retouching people. You don't want to make them look porcelain perfect. Everybody has skin texture, so that is something that you definitely want to keep. And working with a very small brush is the best way to go so that you can just target that one very small area. I'll come up to her forehead, see what's going on up here. Couple of blemishes here. She was fairly easy to work on. She's got really great skin and um, the makeup artist did a great job so shout out to Megan and her social media is in the description below so you're more than welcome to go and check her out she is amazing and uh, I do want to be careful um, especially with her because she does have freckles so I don't want to um, mistake a blemish or mistake a freckle for a blemish. I definitely want to keep um, her freckles because that is a part of her. I don't want to remove anything that um, someone is known for. She has a, a scar or you know a birthmark or anything anywhere. I want to keep that because that it, that defines who the person is. And I do notice this red mark in her eye. And uh, we can also take care of that with the healing brush. I'll zoom in a little bit more so I can get a better look. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller. And since this is a larger area, I don't want to try to get rid of this in one big swoop. Because most of the time if you do that, it won't look very good. So the best way to go about this is to take care of it in pieces. And we are going to be sampling from different areas so that it uh, we don't have any repeating patterns or anything so I'll start closest to the edge of her eyelid and I'll come here repeating patterns is a um, big thing you definitely do not want that uh, anything skin texture wise um, even in an eye, it's all supposed to be random. It doesn't need to look super perfect. And that took care of it very well. And we will zoom out and see how that looks. I'll come back in. I'll do a uh, quick before and after. This is before and this is after. Before and after. And we didn't even really do that much. It probably only took just about five minutes. Um, sometimes it can take a lot longer depending on the person. That's before and then it's after. And we will come back out. And normally I would go a lot further. I would... Um, go on uh, her neck and see if there's anything distracting that I can take care of there. 
um, anything on her arms, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to be concentrating on her face. So I'm actually going to stop there and I'm going to move up to my hair layer. And since this is a studio shot, um, it would be fairly easy to um, tackle these flyaway hairs with the spot healing brush, which is this guy right here. It kind of looks like kind of looks like a band-aid with a handle on it. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Um, for on location shoots, most of the time um, it won't be a solid background like what you see here. So using the healing brush and even the cone step tool, it can be pretty difficult, but it can be done. It's just a lot easier um, with a solid background. So I'm going to start with the spot healing brush to take care of these flyaways that you see here. I'm going to double check my settings, make sure everything is good. Hardness set to zero. My mode is normal. You can use replace if you want to. I might even select that. Um, I'm going to select content aware so that it will um, take care of anything based off of what is around it. And I have sample all layers checked and my pin pressure is off. And again, it is best to, um, you can get away with, with taking care of things in one swoop, but it is best to get rid of things in pieces, just so it's a it can be a little bit more seamless. And take care of these here. Do be careful with the spot healing brush, especially if you're getting pretty close to the skin. Sometimes it won't be perfect every single time, but you can always undo that or take your eraser tool and erase that area if you've already started working on something else. That's the beauty of working on blank layers. You can always go back and fix something if you need to. Pretty much anything that is not going with the flow of the rest of the hair is going to be considered a flyaway. And I also want to take care of a lot of these hairs that are catching uh, most of the light. They can tend to be distracting. Get rid of them in pieces. Looks a lot better. There we go. Now this area right here, I can use the spot healing brush to tackle these. Um, if I had really crazy flyaways here, I would actually use the spot healing brush. That would be my go-to to kind of bring them in. And then I would switch to my clone stamp tool. And I'm going to show you all um, how you all can take care of flyaway hairs with the clone stamp tool. So go ahead and select your clone brush. The trick is to use a very low flow. And it works the same way as the healing brush, except the cone brush is actually like copy and paste, pretty much. You can use the spot healing brush if you wanted to, but getting really close to the hair, it is best to use the cone brush because you do have a lot more control over that. So double checking settings again, hardness is set to zero. Mode is normal. Opacity is 100%. Flow is 5%. I'm going to um, leave my airbrush turned on so that I can keep my stylus on my tablet. So um, I can continually brush over that area. Aligned is checked. And again, I'm going to be sampling from current and below so that it will sample from this and this layer, which has my actual image on it. And my pen pressure is turned off. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to hold down option and I'm going to sample from about right here. And I'm just going to continually brush until they start to slowly fade away. And that's where the low flow comes in. It won't get rid of it immediately. It's kind of a slow build up and then they slowly do start to, to fade away. And don't be scared to take it in a little bit further because we can also fix that. And I can show you guys a way to do that as well. And it is best to sample from different areas instead of brushing continuously just from sampling from one area. 
So whenever you move your brush, just resample. Fairly easy. Take care of that. Now I did make the edge of her hair look a little flat, a little too perfect. And um, if that does happen, you can bring that back. You can add a mask to this layer by hitting this icon down here. And it's going to bring up a white mask by default. So since this is a white mask, you want to use a black brush. So I'm going to select my brush tool, which is over here, or you can hit um, B on your keyboard and it will bring you to your brush tool. And I'm going to use a flow on this brush of the same as my clone stamp tool, about 5%. And I'm going to make sure that my smoothing is set to zero, like always. I'm actually going to, I'll, I'll leave my airbrush um, turned on for this as well, so I can build it up and continuously brush this area to bring it back. Oops. And again, my mode is normal, and my hardness is set to zero. And I'm going to make sure that I'm painting with black. If you are on your default black and white colors, um, you can hit X on your keyboard to toggle between black and white. If they are not black and white, you can hit um, D on your keyboard and it will bring up your default black and white colors. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and I'm just going to brush along this edge slowly to bring it back until I'm satisfied with it. And there we go. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to show you all a quick before and after of what we have done with her hair. And that is already looking so much cleaner. Very easy, very seamless way of cleaning up flyaways. Flyaways can be a bit challenging. They are kind of um, inevitable in photos unless you have an absolutely amazing hairstylist um, who can just get rid of flyaways with, with whatever they're doing. But um, Photoshop usually does the trick. Flyaways are every retoucher's worst nightmare, but this one wasn't, wasn't so bad. And normally I would go a lot further to see if there are other strains of hair that I could um, easily clean up, but I will stop there. And I will do a before and after of the entire group so that you all can see the process. So that is with cleaning up the hair and cleaning up the skin. Fairly easy. Um, it will take some practice, um, but do keep in mind whenever you are using the clone stamp tool um, to get rid of hairs, do use a low flow of about 5 or 10% and mainly the healing brush, the regular healing brush, not the spot healing brush when you are working on the skin. It will give you um, a lot more accuracy from sampling from other areas to take care of any blemishes or small areas of discoloration. So that is going to do for part one of this video. The second part will be my technique on dodging and burning, which is where all of the magic happens. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope that you all have learned something new. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I will have the link to my account in the description below. And be sure to follow this lovely model, Kesley Moorfield. I will have her social media in the description below as well. And she's also a photographer, and she's a really good one. And the makeup artist, Megan, who did the makeup for this photo shoot, is an amazing human being as well. So I will have her social media in the description below so you all can go and check her out. Thanks for watching, guys.